Aluminium is one of the most common materials with which to build bikes. While the cheapest bikes tend to be steel and the most expensive are typically carbon fibre, the middle ground is occupied by aluminium which to many people, I guess, makes it seem particularly unexciting. And it also gets a bad rap. It's less comfortable than steel, it's not as light as carbon, and it's less durable than titanium. But is it really? Well, let's get one thing straight first of all. You actually don't make bikes out of aluminium. You make them out of aluminium alloys. And what those alloys are depends very much on cost, but also the characteristics that you want the tubes and therefore the frame ultimately to have. So for example, Bowman Cycles, who build frames exclusively out of aluminium, choose a 6000 series aluminium for one frame because the characteristics are slightly softer, but yet they choose 7000 series for another because although stiffer and therefore slightly harsher, it is also more robust. Well, that is a good one. Firstly, aluminium alloys as a material are cheaper than carbon fiber, but it's mainly because carbon frames take many, many more staff hours to produce than aluminium. Now, it's not necessarily skilled staff hours, whereas the brazing and welding of metal tubes takes considerable skill. Actually, carbon manufacture is all about lots of tedious labor but that labor needs paying for. And whereas much of aluminium manufacture can be automated, even if you cut the carbon sheets by machine, the rest of it needs to be done by hand. Now this is a definite myth, nowadays at least. Its origins are rooted in fact, mainly thanks to the second generation of aluminium frames, characterized by those drop-dead gorgeous clients of the early 90s with their massively oversized and also very stiff tubes. Now the main problem from that second generation of frames came from the tubes, which were just that, tubes, meaning that their properties were constant in any direction, unlike a carbon frame which can be made stiffer laterally but yet more compliant vertically. However, thanks to considerable investment in aluminium technology, mainly in Asia, new methods of manufacture like hydroforming mean that tube shapes can vary significantly along their length. And then when you add in an advancement in our knowledge of butting, which is where tube thickness varies along its length, meaning that parts of your bike might be less than a millimetre thick and parts of it might be considerably more. What it all means is that aluminium, which as one of its key natural traits is that it is very soft, is able to keep that, yet still providing a stiff platform to pedal and steer from. Now this is a tough one to answer. As we saw in a previous video about carbon fiber, actually it comes down to the engineering rather than material choice when it comes to robustness. But as we also saw in that video, the two materials actually have very different methods of failure. So whereas carbon will crack and then break, aluminium will dent and then bend and then break. And any permutations of the two could prove terminal. But perhaps the reputation of robustness does come with good reason. If you were to observe the aftermath of a pileup in a road race, you would likely see lots of broken carbon fiber. But it's very rare that you'd see anything broken in aluminium which means that perhaps in the real world, it really does deserve that reputation. But another interesting point is that actually, whereas carbon fiber frames will last indefinitely, aluminium has always had a shelf life put on it owing to the fact that the material does fatigue over time. However, someone like Trek here actually offers a lifetime warranty on its alloy frames now, meaning that presumably those concerns are long gone. Well, it does and it doesn't. Because you see, whereas steel frames are famous for rusting, there was a common misconception that aluminium doesn't corrode, presumably because you don't get those red telltale patches under the paintwork. But it does corrode. But instead of rust, what you get is a white powder, typically where water has got under the paint and caused it to bubble up. But again, though, that might be a thing of the past because I contacted Trek to ask them about it and they said that their Alpha series aluminium doesn't suffer from that problem. And they've got a raft of evidence both from in the lab and out on the open road to back it up. So whereas owners of older aluminium may want to periodically check to make sure they don't have any telltale signs of bubbling paintwork, owners of modern aluminium bikes can rest easy. 
Aluminium alloys are consigned to the mid-range of bikes for economic reasons then. But to overlook it as a frame material is to do so at your peril, because a high-end aluminium bike could easily outstrip a low-end carbon one on ride feel alone, even if the two are priced and weigh similar amounts. So it's perhaps for this reason that big brands like Trek and Canyon are still investing heavily in high-performance aluminium, as well as smaller brands like Bowman. What will be interesting then is to see how the two materials stack up out on the open road. Hmm. While we're pondering that, I did mention about that carbon fibre video earlier on. If you want to see it, because you haven't yet already, then you can click straight through to it just up there. Or to see behind the scenes at the SRAM factory, where we got to see not only aluminium being machined, but also carbon being laid up, click just down there for that video. Otherwise, make sure you subscribe to GCN. To do that, just click on the globe.